Hey everybody, welcome to the Majestic 13 Adventure. We're back with the six files. Uh, a, uh, a majestic or a section six um, like a task force team that's being sent to hunt the evil aliens of force uh, and try and stop them from destroying the planet. In our previous adventure, um, the lead agent, Agent Skelder, was killed and then his clone took back over the team. It didn't go great. We fought a machine man uh, that was designed to hunt humans and um, well, suffice to say, only two of us walked away. It was just Spender and uh, and Molly that actually managed to leave the, uh, the 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 area without you know being unconscious and covered in weird nano webs. So we'll see how it goes for the next one. Um, we'll roll up the table, roll up the mission. We'll get this underway. All right. So here they are, left to right. We got Agent Doggett, Agent Molly, Agent Skelder the second because he's a clone, and then we have Agents Crycheck and Spender, Spender, sorry, um, who make up the rest of the team. Uh, we did manage to get a sniper rifle for uh, for Skelder 2, and that will make him slightly more dangerous, and he's not just carrying a pistol. All right, so we're in a mission determination. What is Majestic 13 sending us to do today? So first, what is the terrain going to be like? It is the wilderness yet again. And so we have to set up the table. Heading out to the desert this time. Let's see what the first quadrant is going to be filled with. D3 broken down structures and a small pool up here. Broken down structures, two of them. Garage and a road sign fits the bill for me. Then the next quadrant. D3 broken down structures in a small pool. Structures, three. The toxic waste attracted something. Then this quadrant, one, uh, two, sorry. A large wood or rock formation, a ruin or broken down structure. Big old pyre of tires instead of rocks and uh, another building. And then last quadrant is a one, a large woods or rock formation and a small pool or clump of foliage. Head cannon for this. The monster is clearly feeding on the radiation. For train if it's dangerous or not, this thing is fine, this thing is going to be dangerous. There's something wrong with it. Uh, pool is fine. This one also dangerous because it's radioactive. And then this one, fine. Big piece of terrain, super dangerous. You can assume it's all just riddled with radiation. The big garage also full of radiation. Fine is just difficult terrain, which makes sense. This ruin, is dangerous. This big sign is difficult. We're on a 5-6. If you end in contact with it, you take D6 damage because it's it's lethal. And it's just a half movement speed, half dexterity to move through a difficult train. See what our adversary is going to be. Uh, table 11 and then D6 will be a 5. A pulsar. It's a psi monster made from radiation. Um, so the Pulsar is an alien race that force uses to cause panic and confusion amongst their enemies. This alien creates sonic waves that destroy anyone in proximity. So in chaos, confusion, and madness. We're still in phase one, so it's got 110 hit points, goes to extremis in 30, defense 21, acuity 20, uh, combat 18, dex 23, fortitude 20, and side 25. Uh, special abilities, mental defense. Whenever an enemy utilizes any ability with the psionic keyword within 12, they take d6 damage. In addition, whenever the Pulsar makes a stat check to avoid or clear a condition caused by a sign of keyword, it rolls twice and checks the highest. And then derangement, if an enemy activates within 12 of the Pulsar and, uh, under the effect of any condition, they move randomly, determine a random direction, and move the enemy their full movement distance in a straight line in that direction. If it's to carry the model into the dangerous terrain or cause it to fall, roll for this effects as normal. Freak out. And then uh, its actions are the basic actions of Pulse Wave, and it's a Ravager, so it's going to activate every time we attack it. All enemies within 12 of the Pulsar must succeed in a fortitude stat, and this is an area attack, so it's going to do this one all the time. Uh, everyone within 12 takes a fortitude stat check on 18 or 22, or suffers d6 damage and be stunned, which means they'll also be deranged, and it's psionic. And then focusing wave, if the Pulsar activates within 12 of an enemy that is stunned, it will use focusing wave, it will make a single attack against the closest stunned enemy. If two are the same, determine which one, and it's 46 plus 2 damage. If this attack scores a crit, the targets must make a fortitude check, or just immediately go out of action. And then Chaos Suggestion, if it used for Focusing Wave on its last activation, then it uses this. Um, as, if there's an enemy within, uh, stunned in within 12. All enemies within 12 of the Pulsar that are stunned must succeed in a Fortitude on 20 uh, or 24 if it's in Extremis. Otherwise, next time they activate, if they do not clear the stun condition, they must use their attack action and randomly determine a random foe. So basically they attack somebody else. Just a nuclear ghost. No big deal. Yeah, let's fight a nuclear ghost. Great, Vince. Just so excited to fight a nuclear ghost. Maybe we'll get another clone Mulder out of this. Skelder. Sorry, legally distinct Skelder. Don't, don't sue me, Fox. Great, so we're in a deployment. Uh, well, 
Skelder, you have a sniper rifle now. As long as it doesn't turn into night again, you should be fine. So you can go anywhere in your half. Let's not go on something dangerous. Let's just go on the roof of this building. I think most of the terrain in our half is dangerous. Um, so I think we're just gonna park the van. So I've decided we're all arriving by van and have most of the people just hiding behind it. Really using additional terrain, I'm just using this as like a marker for where I arrived. Cause it looks cooler and all my assault rifles are gonna hang out. Uh, this is radioactive, so I don't really want to hide behind it. Oh, what's my secondary? Bureaucracy. So the bureaucracy for this one is an eight, which is a dangerous mission. Yeah, of course it is. Whenever you make a foobar, it's plus one. So it's going to negate our automatic minus one uh, for being the section six. And then what is our secondary objective? It's just a D6. It's going to be one, which is terrain reporting. Your team achieves a secondary objective if over the course of the mission a member of your team moves under or within one inch of pieces of non scatter terrain on the board. So I have, to, I have to run around. Fantastic. Dog it, you're very fast, so that's going to be your job. <laughs> so you're going to go over here, and then I guess uh, you're not fast, Molly, so you're going to hang out and get ready to hopefully heal people. On this side of the table, there are one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of terrain. Let's roll to see which one the bad guy is next to, left to right. It's just coming out the doors. I go scout the terrain. Fantastic. Well, turn one of five. Uh, this thing is acuity 20, so it's going to go first. Dexterity 23, so it's going to just place itself basically within 12 of us, because it wants to, within cover. <laughs> And then it's going to blast everybody. It's first action, it uses its basic action. So everybody within 12 has to make a fortitude check or be stunned for D6 damage. We are plus one to all fortitude checks, which is great. It's only on an 18 right now, uh, which means we're not doing too bad. Skulder just auto passes unless he rolls a one. He doesn't. Um, then it's going to be Molly, who will pass at a 16 on a four, actually on a two, uh, for the... Um, I think that's Crycheck. On a 17, he'll pass. Doggett on a two. What's Doggett's fortitude? Doggett's fortitude is 15, 16, 18. He's actually okay. I only fell on a one. And then finally, uh, Spender on a nine. His fortitude's 15, 16. He's fine too. Well, they all passed. <laughs> that was lucky. Because nobody's stunned when I attack it, it's just gonna do this again until it stuns somebody and then it goes onto its tree. Uh, but we'll just start with our highest, which is Crycheck. Uh, he's gonna take a shot with his assault rifle. This thing is in cover, unfortunately. His dexterity 14, though. I think we need to spread out. So we're going to go eight, and then six more, because cover doesn't really matter against this thing, because it's just it's just trying to stun us all. Only combat nine, but it's only defense 21. So on a 12, I'll hit it. I do. Six damage with his assault rifle. Nine damage. Activates again, and everybody has to make another fortitude check. So we'll go left to right. So starting with uh, cry check. He is fortitude 11, 12, so he needs a six and nine, he'll pass. And within one of this during the boop, which was important, I scouted the train. Um, then Molly, she is fortitude 16, so on a two, she's okay. Uh, Skulder 17, so he's fine as well. Uh, for that is Spender, nine, nine plus his 15, so yeah, he's fine. And then Doggett, four, uh, he's 15, 19, 20. He's fine. So the toughest skill is coming in handy here, so we, we're still okay. Uh, and that means it's done its second activation of three. Move, because it's got everybody in range already in line of sight. So then we get to go with our next highest, which is tied between Doggett and Molly. So Molly is dexterity 14, and Doggett is 17. So Doggett's going to walk as well. He's going to go eight, and then eight. So he can scout all three of these, but be within 12 with his pistol. And he's gonna blast this thing. 11, so he needs to roll a 10. He does not. He attempts to pulse one more time. Uh, so left, right, starting with Crycheck. He passes with an 18. Molly passes with a nine. Uh, Skelder on a five, that's a 22, he's okay. Uh, then it's Crycheck, or sorry, not Crycheck, that's um, Spender, which is a 21, 22, he's okay. And then finally Doggett on a 17 is also okay. This episode of Crycheck's 11, these guys are all pretty good at passing these tests. Ravager, and he's in range of his pulse, he just doesn't move. Uh, so that was um, uh, Doggett, so now it's Molly, and she can go Dexterity 10, so she's gonna go, I'll just make sure I pass within one of this. We gotta make sure we don't get dangerous though. 
she doesn't. We need to roll for him as well. Dog it. He's also fine. And she'll fire her assault rifle. She's in cover though now. So she just picked the lowest. Five, and that's an 18. So she fails. Rhonda Skelder too. <laughs> He's gonna not move so you can aim with his sniper rifle and then take a shot. He fails spectacularly with a one. He fails. Good job. Uh, and then finally, it's just Agent um, Spender who can walk 13. He'll walk over to here just to make sure he's in range, and then he'll fire with his assault rifle in the open. And 11 plus 15 is 24, so he hits for 2d6 damage. That's 4, so it's 13. In round 1, because that thing is activated out. Fubar rolls. We're just straight D6ing it with the turn. Just immediately goes Fubar. And what happens? Let me roll for the Fubar. 15? That's a sudden storm. All the range is gone. So a big sandstorm gets whipped up by the nuclear ghost, as as would completely make sense. Uh, and all ranges are 12 inches. So we have to be inside its aura effect now to actually affect it and kill it. Fantastic. Well, we reset the clock on the ghost and it goes. So it moves to within 12 of everybody. It's already in 12 of everybody. And then pulses out stuns. Uh, so it's not an extremis yet. It's going to get to 22 to, to beat these checks when it does. So Crycheck is the most vulnerable. He's only 42 to 11. 12 though because the roughest and the toughest. Nope, he fails. He's stunned. It happens sooner or later. So he fails for Molly. She's on a 15. So 16. She's a 2. She's good. Uh, 2 for the boss. He's good. A 2 for Spender. He's also good. And then also for Doggett. Yeah, they're fine. So just Crycheck betraying them. That makes sense. He's the first one to go. Does he shake it? He needs to roll a 9. He does, so he just shakes the stun. He can move normally, so he's gonna head over to this piece of terrain. Try not to get irradiated on a five. He's good. And then he'll take a shot. He's only combat nine because of his brain damage. He hits for 2d6. Krajic's not screwing around with this thing. He's like, I've been to Chernobyl, no thank you. Five damage. It's at a total of 18. And now we've scattered this piece as well. It's gonna go again though, so it pulses once again. Does Krajic lose his mind? He does not. Does Molly? She does not. This is all on twos now. Uh, good, dog it, good, and spender also good. It's second action. So we're on to Molly. She's going to walk over to scout this piece. It's only difficult, so she's not going to get hurt. And then she's going to blast at a combat 13. So she needs to roll a 8. She sure does. 2d6 damage with a little assault pistol. 11 damage goes to 29. 110 to start. And then it does its third action and bursts everyone's brains again. Uh, the important one, which is Crycheck. No, he's fine. Moving left to right. Uh, Molly's fine. Skelder, also fine. Uh, the big guy, or sorry, not big guy, um, Spender is fine. And then Doggett, a two? He's a 16, so he's actually okay because he's plus one from being um, roughest and toughest. It's just free and clear to explore and murder. So we're back to acuity for Doggett. He's going to walk over to this terrain feature and scout it out. Actually, he's got the movement. He's dexterity 17, so he can scout this and then scout this and be within 12. Actually, get the other side of it and be within 12. Fire his pistol. Uh, six with combat 11's a miss. Then it's Skelder sitting still. He is combat 17. He needs a four to hit this thing. He sure does. And he's gonna get 2d6 plus four with his sniper rifle. How much damage is that? That's 12. And then it's just Agent Spender. He's combat 15. He'll sit still and blast it. He does for 2d6 damage with his assault rifle. Seven more. Fubar roll, adding two this time. Pfft, another Fubar roll it is, d20. We get a six. Civilians, no, civilians become worried of your situation. There's no immediate impact as they see the fight and quickly leave the area. Your team, however, may not maintain the secrecy of Majestic 13 and loses the bonus for bureaucracy. Oh no, so civilians, a random hiker appears on the table. <sighs> And the janitor comes out of here being like, what is happening? Three, we might actually kill this thing unless it levels up and drives us insane, which might also happen. Um, so it gets to go first to QD20. We reset to its first action. Uh, it pulses out. So starting with Spender again, left to right. He fails and becomes stunned. Oh no. Uh, then Molly, 12, she's okay. This is a two plus for everybody else. Dog it is fine. Uh, Skelder is fine, and then Spender is also fine. And like twos. Everybody's, everybody's 42 to 15 or higher. <laughs> we'll get crazier once we start damaging this thing. So then he immediately gets to go. He can walk. He's going to go convince these civilians everything's fine. Uh, it is a storm, though. So he's going to walk over here and stay within 12. But he's got the movement, because he's movement 13. He could dip to there and then dip back. She gets stunned first on a 9. He does. It's a 20. Um, then he'll blast his assault rifle. 
A three will miss though, because he needs a 21, and that's only a 18 for him. So it fights back. Once again, the mental pulse, starting with cry check. He's fine. Uh, Molly on a two, it's weirdly fine. Fine. Skelder, fine. And then finally, Spender, also fine. Got it surrounded now, boys. Uh, Doggett, shoot it with a pistol. Doggett's gonna walk back to here, and then back over, because he's, uh, He's movement 17, and he doesn't get irradiated. Got it most of the table now, except for I think this piece. His pistol into it. Uh, that is a seven plus 11 is 18, he'll miss. And then it pulses a third time. Starting with cry check, working left, or right, sorry. He fails and becomes stunned. Okay, this is important, because the start of the next turn, he will still be stunned, and it's gonna get to do its crazy mojo. Um, then, uh, Smully, she's fine. Uh, Doggett is okay. Uh, Skelder's fine, and Spender did not roll a one. It's Molly time then. She's gonna walk over to this one, try and investigate. Uh, and she will have now tagged the last piece of terrain. And does she hit with her assault rifle? A 12 plus 13 is 25. She sure does for 2d6 damage. Seven more. Skelder aiming down his sniper rifle again. Combat 17, so he needs to roll a four better. He rolls a three. Tremendous failure of Skelder. You just are. Um, and then last but not least is Spender with his combat 15. He hits. Does 2d6 damage. Six more. Another foobar roll! A five. Uh, that is definitely another foobar roll. D20. Six. Uh, still civilians. More civilians begin showing up. The park ranger arrives. <laughs> and it's like, what is happening? This is important because it will not make its basic action now because there is a stun model within 12. And that means it's going to use its focused wave because it's, it's locked onto um, Krychek's brain. It's a combat 18 attack against his 30, uh, and it's 46 plus two damage, and he might just die on a crit. Six plus 18 is 24, he misses. Right, well, he gets a chance to shake it on a nine. He does, so he shakes that stun, and then shoots with his assault rifle. I guess he could move first. He's not gonna bother. He, ah, yeah, he'll get to cover. Why not? And then he'll fire his assault rifle, and hit for 2d6 damage. Five more. Does he take damage from the, the thing? No, he's not irradiated. It's on a five, six. Molly's gonna go. She's got her assault rifle. She's gonna move back behind cover because she's scoped everything out now uh, and then fire at him. Oh, sorry, it, it goes again. It pulses before it does that. So his uh, his test, he passes. Uh, on twos for everybody else. Fine, uh, Molly, fine, fine. And then Spender, fine, second action. Now she goes, takes a cover here. Blast with her assault rifle, uh, and hits for 2d6 more, 7, 6 damage away from it hulking out. So it pulses one more time, because she attacked it, so starting with uh, cry check, he fails and becomes stunned. So we're gonna have to, he's going to get blasted again next turn. Um, then into uh, Doggett, he's fine, Molly, she's fine, um, the big guy. He's fine, he's 14, 17. And then into Crycher, or so Spender rather, he's fine, 19. All right, it's activated out. So with Molly having gone, it's Doggett's turn. He's gonna call for aid on a three plus. He's gonna call on a drone strike on this thing. He fails. It doesn't activate. Then we go to Mulder, or Skelder. He's gonna hit on a four. He does an 11, so it's 2d6 plus four this time. This is gonna make it mad. Oh my god, seven? He lost his gun again. He barely makes it mad. And then finally it's Spender, who just assault rifles it on a six. That's exactly 21, so he hits for 2d6 damage. And does 10 more to 91. Fubar roll for turn three! Uh, yes, on a seven. It is definitely Fubar yet again. It's another d20 roll. Come on, give me that 1920. Call in the orbital laser. No, 10. Collapses. Oh no, randomly turn a single piece of non scout train on the board. That train collapses. Well, there's a sandstorm happening. All models on the train are within three of it. Friendly or enemy suffer D6 plus two damage. Like big chunks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, he's on his one, six. So let's see which one it is. Going clockwise from the top building. One, two, three. So this piece collapses. It was in three of it. I just imagine the sandstorm just ripping it to pieces. Uh, so immediately this guy activates and he gets to blast. And he's in Extremis now, so he will blast uh, into Stunned Crycheck. A 10 plus a 18 is a miss. Has his combat in dex, but not, does nothing to his defense, so he's fine. Uh, and then he gets to go and sees if he shakes it on a nine. No, he does. And he'll attempt to blast with his combat or with his battle rifle and miss. <laughs> so it then uh, does it again and 
uh, po no, sorry, it previously did focus wave, so it immediately does chaos suggestion, which doesn't do anything. But he's stunned. Say it doesn't, because it doesn't make any sense. We'll have them all make checks again, because otherwise it just loses an action. So making a check, he passes, and then it's on twos for everybody else. Fine, Mully, fine, Skelder, fine, and Spender, fine. These are on 22s now, but that just means that they need to roll uh, sixes, which they did. Because he, well, actually, he needed even less than that. Because uh, he's fortitude 16, so that's 22. Exactly. Yeah, it's a six. Passed. That was the lowest number I rolled. Um, but yeah, it's it's now going to get blasted, hopefully. That was its second action, so then it's on to Molly. Uh, she's going to shoot it with the assault rifle and hit and do 2d6 damage, which is seven more. He's going to go and he's going to call in an airstrike and fail. Uh, sorry, it, it activates again. Uh, so now it's on a 22, so he needs to roll a 11. A 12, actually, and he fails, so he's stunned again. Uh, Doggett is on a... He's a 16, so he needs to roll a 6. He's fine. Molly on a 6. She's fine. Skelder on a 6. He's fine. And then Spender on a 6. 20. Super fine. It's third action. Between... Uh, yeah, Doggett and, and Molly going. So now it's on to <laughs> the big guy with his combat of 17. Hit it on a 4. Oh my god, she sucks so bad. And then finally it's Spender. 18 hits, 2d6 damage, 8 more, it's at 99 damage. Round 5, another FUBAR roll. It's the final turn of the game, we still haven't killed it. We get one more FUBAR roll. It's a 7, which is another terrain collapse. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, this one collapses. It takes d6 plus 2 damage, takes 6 damage. Because he is wearing body armor at least. And then immediately the big blast into Crycheck. Four is gonna miss. It's only combat 18. It was its first action. So does Crycheck shake the condition on 20? A six is a fail? No. Combat skills have to shoot it. Uh, 16 plus a five is a 21. He hits it just barely. Blinded in one eye, stunned. Can he finish it off with an 11? He does exactly what he needs to kill it. Ah, oh, Crycheck, you were the hero the whole time. Blast the nuclear ghost away. <laughs> That went significantly better than the first mission. Um, although civilians were alerted this time and we're gonna have to make up some weather balloon stories, I think. Nobody got taken out of action, which was tremendous. Although Doggett failed to call in the radio the entire time, which was less great. We didn't have to uh, get a new mo a new Skelder, a new Mulder. <laughs> um, so no bad damage rolls. Um, we did, however, earn a bunch of experience, just not the one for the civilians not being alerted. So we get one for surviving. Uh, we weren't put out of action, so everybody's gonna get that second one. Our secondary for a third one, and then no one was taken out of action for a fourth one. Elder and Spender are both gonna up their acuity a little bit by one. Molly's gonna up her dexterity to an 11, so she's a little bit faster. Doggett's gonna up his combat, and so is Crycheck. Rating becomes two, which is tremendous. It's rewards, uh, we are gonna request some more stuff. We're gonna keep requesting that armor, uh, which is gonna get a plus one now. We're gonna get a plus, uh, because it's the second round we request it, which will give armor to dog it. Uh, then we're going to request, I think, we still want that weapons depot, we'll get a plus one for that one too for our base, and then finally, I think, we wanna get like a detector for Mully. Flashlight. <laughs> so, uh, winning the game will also help. Three? Oh no, but not by the end of round three, so you don't get that one. Uh, we did request one of these things before though, but we did not alert civilians. So, we just get a plus one, it's gonna be on fives. Fours for the armor and the um, the base upgrade. So, for the armor for Doggett, nope. So, that's great. Base upgrade, yay, we get the weapons depot. So we're plus one damage to all our weapons, and then for the scanner, no. So there we go, we did it. We managed to survive a mission, which was, I was feeling like it was tremendously unlikely after the first mission. And all we had to do was fight atomic spirits in the desert. It was apparently what our calling truly was because we're all very tough and immune to radiation. Um, so yeah, so Skelter 2 doing twice as well as Skelter, like in Beer Fest, as Skelter 2 is twice the man that Skelter 1 was. Uh, and everybody's still waiting for their gear requisitions, but we're very close. We got one more mission before we hit rating 3, and that's going to trigger an event. So thanks for watching. We'll see you for more uh, Majestic 13 in two weeks. So I'm Ash. Have a great Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. 
Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continue to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.